They say, well, Eric, why don't you just stop letting them in? It's against the law. Federal law does not allow me to do that. Well, why don't you just deport? It's against the law. Federal law doesn't allow me to do that. This has created a crisis that's wrong for New York taxpayers, wrong for the migrants, and wrong for our city, and wrong for our country. And the national government is not doing their job. This is so devastating for our city. Wow. That doesn't sound very welcoming anymore. What happened to the sanctuary city up there? Dang. Joining me now, Erica Donald. She is the CEO of Optima Ed. Okay, Erica, uh, I don't understand what happened in New York City. I was told over and over again, what do they call these people? Migrants. They look at the, they're migrants and that uh, obviously it's a sanctuary place and it's a safe place. Is it no longer a safe place? What happened up there? It's amazing how different they sound when it's no longer just Florida and Texas and Arizona dealing with this immigration crisis that we know is existing. Uh, it's great to hear finally the people of New York and the so-called sanctuary states, sanctuary cities feel the brunt of this. Frankly, as someone who is a proponent of education, education reform and the children, the education that they deserve, uh, our children have been feeling the brunt of this for many years. It's getting worse and worse as more of these migrants are flooding on our cities and students are even more behind than they ever have been after COVID. And now New York City, as well as many other places around the country, are understanding that this influx of migrants is totally unfair. It's taking resources away from American students who need them so desperately. Yeah, let's talk for a minute about the need of American students. I'm glad you brought that up because I, right here where I sit, there's a tiny town called Alvin about five minutes away from here. And in Alvin, they have to have a special Spanish speaking wing. They are so over, overwhelmed with illegal immigrant kids. And Alvin isn't exactly posting the best doctor scores I've ever seen in my lifetime. This cheats American children and not enough people talk about this. You're absolutely right. There have been studies that an influx of non-English speaking students take resources away, teacher attention away. We're watching as places like Chicago and other major cities have to hire more and more social workers. They have to hire more uh, special needs support. And those are not for American students who also need these resources. It's inevitable that resources are diverted to the ones who need them the most. And the migrant students are coming in very far behind with their educational progress. So teachers have to slow down an already slow and watered down curriculum. So what is happening to our American students who need the extra support after all of the learning loss that we saw during the pandemic? Okay, setting the illegals aside in a moment, let's just focus on the American kids. Where are they? What is the status? Because every teacher I talk to, every educator I talk to, they tell me it is frightening how far behind American kids are compared to other kids around the world, and we are competing. Well, we would like to be competing. I would say we're not doing a very good job. Yeah. We have 40 yeah. high schools in Baltimore, 40 entire high schools that have zero students who are proficient in math and reading. Those are entire schools with not a single child who is eligible for graduation through proficiency. We're looking at 38% proficiency in mathematics grade three to eight in New York City. Uh, the number is even lower in Illinois, 27% proficient in math. The majority of our students graduating from high school are not proficient at grade level. That is a ridiculous statistic. It means that we are not competing on the global stage. And these statistics are made worse by the fact that we have not done anything significant to ensure that students are caught up from learning loss after the pandemic. And instead, we are flooding our schools with students who need more and more support. How are we going to fix this? We need more transparency. Instead, we see Oregon completely eliminating the requirement that students be tested proficient in reading and math to graduate high school. Can we really call them graduates or should we just call them finishers? Okay. How 
could we be this far behind? Like you referenced Baltimore schools, and obviously Baltimore has a million and one problems. I realize that. But the kids are going to a school, right? Something that calls itself a school, and they're sitting in a classroom by somebody who calls himself a teacher. What are they doing all day? Watching movies? Not that I had any problem with movie day, but what are they doing all day? It's a good question. It's something that I've been battling for the past 12 years. There is a curriculum crisis in our country. The progressive curriculum, the ideology that's taking time away from the reading and mathematics that really should be the focus of our education institutions, just a lack of seriousness around the scholarly environment that we should be creating in our schools. Instead, we're talking about a focus on ideology, a focus on cultural issues, really uh, it has taken away from the focus on reading and mathematics proficiency. And we've also seen, because of social pressures, schools moving children along who are not performing at grade level. And states like Florida, who said, you cannot pass third grade without reading, are now loosening those standards. We just saw a bill introduced here in Florida to try to eliminate the requirement for students to read on grade level by grade three in order to pass. We cannot allow this pressure to continue. In fact, we need to tighten those standards to ensure that students are not getting to high school without the skills that they need to be successful. What's classical education? I'm sure that's not what I received, but you said you're in favor of it, so it's probably good. What is it? Right, at Optima Ed, we do run classical schools, including a classical online school that's available throughout the country. And classical education really takes you back to the traditions uh, that have succeeded over thousands of years. A return to the liberal arts and sciences, including explicit phonics, explicit grammar, like diagramming sentences, classic literature, reading of source documentation, like the Constitution, the Federalist Papers, and even going back to the Magna Carta. Uh, truly learning the basis of scientific thought and theory, uh, Socratic discussion and debate. Uh, it's teaching children all of the foundations of thought uh, that have proven successful over thousands of years. And it gives them both the knowledge and the virtues to be uh, successful in whatever that they decide to do in life after their education is completed. Speaking of sentence structure, can you not end a sentence with the word is, just I-S? Because I do that all the time, and people yell at me and say that's inappropriate. Well, listen, I am a CPA, not an educator. I'm, I'm in this because I needed school choice for my children. I discovered classical education. I ran for school board, discovered that the public education system is not the way that I would like to uh, see reforms happen. In fact, it's just impossible in some ways to reform the public education monopoly. And so I started a company that's going to start schools and make a classical education available tuition free to as many families as possible, people who need it like I did for my own children. And so I feel your pain because I didn't get as good of an education growing up as my children are getting or the children in our Optima schools. But I'm determined to end that here and now and make sure that generations beyond us have that opportunity. So what is this Optum thing? Is this homeschooling? Like if I want to yank my kids out of school, could I do this in my house? Or I should say my wife, not me. You, you absolutely could. This is Optima Academy Online is available across the country, as well as in states that offer education scholarship accounts, ESAs like Florida and Arizona, and you can access it for free. It's actually the world's first VR virtual reality school. So not only is it a classical style of education, but the live learning takes place in VR in three dimensions. So students can uh, not only learn from a live classically trained teacher in a what looks to be a traditional classroom, they can also go to ancient Rome or Independence Hall and have the constitutional experience Aww. or even to the moon for the lunar landing. It's a pretty amazing uh, school. And we have over 400 students in that experience in our second year of operation this year. Oh, that sounds sick. My school sucked. All right, Eric, thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you.